Hey everybody, Eric Count Sage Dynamics, and this is the Dead Air E-Brake. If there's something I love more than anything, uh, it's continued innovation in firearms. And suppressors should be no different. Uh, suppressors should suppress, that's their primary function, but can we get anything else? Can we get any other performance out of them? The E-Brake's been around for a while, and I alluded to in a previous video, I talked about I was going to do a video on it, and I wanted to wait until I had a lot of time on the E-Brake on various dead air suppressors before I put a video out to see if it was really substantially valuable, if it was actually going to provide a added benefit, or if it was just something that was more cosmetic than functional. And I can tell you right now that the E-Brake is probably one of my favorite suppressor accessories ever and certainly one of my favorite features when it comes to dead air suppressors. I've been using dead air suppressors for a few years now and I've always been a fan of their QD system, uh, one of my favorite QD systems. They also make really good muzzle devices which is something you get into with suppressors. You may like the suppressor but you may not like the muzzle devices offered by that manufacturer and very rarely do you see crossover between two different suppressor companies sharing a commonality of a muzzle device unless it's like an A2 uh, footprint suppressor. Uh, some of the older ones are that way, but you see most people have gotten away for those for obvious reasons because even the military is like, okay, yeah, we'll use a different muzzle device because it's better for a suppressor versus trying to come up with some kind of collar system that's going to give you really good accuracy. But eh, kind of beside the point. Dead Air makes a very durable can. Uh, most of their cans, even those they say are not full auto rated, kind of in, in my opinion uh, are. They're, they're more durable than what you'd expect and they're probably more durable than even Dead Air would quote as far as performance goes. So they are very hard use cans. Hands. Even suppressors like the Nomad and the Nomad L, which aren't really kind of geared for that really hard use, uh, high round count, full auto, or cruiser machine gun type, uh, I guess, purpose, still maintain the same degree of sound attenuation and durability with extended cycles of fire. So durability's never been a question. One of the problems, I wouldn't say necessarily problems, but one of the, the particulars about suppressors, especially really good suppressors, is they do change the recoil impulse of the firearm and depending on the length of the suppressor paired to the length of the firearm, and then you add in the type of quality of ammunition you're shooting through it, there is a muzzle reduction issue. You're not going to necessarily have uh, what they show you in the movies, so to speak, as in a suppressor is going to completely remove your signature uh, uh, muzzle flash, if you will. That's definitely not the case, especially when you pair a shorter suppressor with a shorter gun, like a, you know, you take a 10.5 and throw even a regular Sandman S on it. Every four or five rounds, or, or depending on what your cycle or rate of fire or your frequency of fire is, you're going to build up volume in that can. When the volume escapes, you're going to have some some extraneous, if you will, ignition, and there's your muzzle signature. All suppressors do it, especially when you pick up the rate of fire to something beyond, I guess, bolt gun territory. So having something to help manage that flash, such as a brake, and I know some of you are probably already thinking right now, brakes usually increase muzzle signature. You're absolutely right, for the most part, on a non-suppressed gun. But when you suppress a gun, gas behaves a little bit differently uh, because of the nature of the way suppressors work in general. So being able to put a e-brake on my dead air suppressor can reduce some of that signature. Notice this most with my dead air Sandman K. The K is a great little can. Uh, it's not really intended to make a gun super quiet. It's designed to give you below pain threshold report at the ear for kind of like an emergency situation. Think about like a home defense suppressor, something that's going to be more maneuverable on longer guns if you don't have SBRs. It's also not something I would recommend putting on an SBR because on anything, my personal opinion, my use, anything below 14.5, that thing gets really spicy when you get around objects that sound echoes off of, like hallways. So I primarily used it on the Sandman S and the Sandman K. They do make slightly different diameter ones to fit the Nomad. In fact, the very first e-brake I had was on the Nomad L, and it's still on it today. 
it gives me a more consistent recoil pulse. Uh, with, the, with the Nomad L, sound attenuation is great because it's a very long can. I usually, it, it's pretty much my go-to thread on direct thread suppressor for bolt guns for precision shooting. For my 5.56s, I still use the Nomad, the traditional size Nomad, the Sandman S and the Sandman K. I use the Sandman K on my longer guns, 13.7 and longer. 13.7, that's a damn spicy can, but it's better than nothing, literally. With the e-brake on there, there is a significant change in muzzle signature. Shooting under low light, for example, with the 13.7 with just the regular K on it with no e-brake, I get a significant muzzle flash. It's not that big of a deal because the muzzle flash moves at the speed of light. However, it does take away target signature from me between shots. So every time I pull the trigger, that muzzle blast is so in my face, literally blocking my field of view, especially looking through a, a magnified optic, that I've got to literally wait, pause just, just a little bit to begin to bring my reticle back into target arc and acquire my next point of aim to fire my next shot. I throw the e-brake on it and that muzzle blast just disappears. It's just gone. It's still technically there, but it's not noticeable in a way that I'm even aware of it when I'm shooting even a high volume of fire, a very quick string of 5-10 rounds, muzzle signature's gone. With the Sandman S, the muzzle signature on the Sandman S, unless you put it on a really short gun, is not necessarily noticeable at all. However, the e-brake's other added benefit uh, and there's there's another benefit after this, but the, the next added benefit is the fact that it does give me a more direct recoil pulse. Uh, suppressors can change the way recoil behaves on the gun. Generally, it's a rearward push. So depending on if you have a compromised shooting position or if you know, you're know five or six rounds into a string of fire, or you've been shooting for a while and you're kind of fatigued or whatever, uh, the muzzle becomes more manageable because it starts behaving more like a muzzle device again versus a suppressor over a muzzle device. So I get my sight picture back faster. I'm able to mitigate some of that muzzle rise that a just traditional suppressor profile will give me. So that's two really good benefits to the e-brake. The third benefit being, and this is, uh, this is something that, that unless I had read the science and then heard it for myself, I wouldn't necessarily have believed it. Because the e-brake changes the behavior of the gas exiting the suppressor, it actually does reduce the report of the firearm a few more decibels. It's not necessarily something that's going to be noticeable at the ear, because humans have a very gross appreciation for plus or minus decibels, usually around plus or minus five for really good hearing conditions. Uh, but it does change the tone and anything that changes the tone to me is like, okay, that sounds a little softer. I can't definitively say that with the e-brake on, I can notice the difference at the ear, but I do notice a difference in tone. So it may be getting into a very semantical argument over the results on a decibel meter, uh, but I do notice the, notice the change in tone. And overall, that's kind of a tertiary benefit, if you will, to the other two benefits that I already really appreciate. This isn't the first time somebody's built in a break into a suppressor. I think the big selling point with dead air is it's removable and I can still change out my end caps. So I can take my single e-brake and take it off my Sandman S and put it on my Sandman K or my Sandman L. You could even run it on the Nomad even though the diameter is a bit different as far as the e-brake is concerned. They make a Nomad size one and you can put it on like the Wolfman, their 9mm slash 5.56 slash 300 blackout light duty use can and change out your muzzle devices. You can throw a flash hiding cap on there if you really wanted to. It's kind of like Legos at this point. Uh, I've got the ability to swap and play and so if I'm if I just get one e-brake for the size suppressors I have, then I'm gonna have what I need. My personal advice would be to go ahead and get one of these, put it on the suppressor, and just kind of leave it there. Like I said, you can get away with using no problem at all the Sam NS. I mean, I use the Sam NS for thousands and thousands and thousands of rounds without having an e-brake on it. But once I put an e-brake on it, I'm like, how did I ever really live without this? On the Sandman K, I would almost say it should be a requirement, if, especially if you have low light concerns, to go ahead and throw that e-brake on there to give you your uh, your vision back uh, when you're shooting, especially on those shorter guns or or um, for range purposes. If you're just shooting, you know, 55 grand range ammo, which usually has more muzzle flash than say self really high quality self defense or precision ammo, uh, I would consider that to be almost a necessity. For the Nomad L, uh, it's great on bolt guns, especially shooting from the prone, because it tames the gun down just a little bit more, so you get back on target a little bit faster, especially at those longer ranges. I don't necessarily have to dial out, dial back in uh, to reacquire my point of aim if I'm shooting at something really small that's really far away. So there's a lot of great benefits to it, and the really only drawback is the fact that that doesn't come built into the suppressor. But not every suppressor needs it. Uh, like I said, the Sam S doesn't need it, but I would highly recommend putting it on there anyway. Uh, of course, one of the concerns may be, you know, it adds a little bit of length. In the grand scheme of your CQB life, I don't think this is going to make a huge difference, especially considering the benefits it's going to give you. Sometimes we got to make trade-offs. You're going to have to gain an extra inch-ish in order to have a more controllable muzzle with a less noticeable muzzle flash. Uh, I feel like that's a good trade-off. 
So if you're curious about the e-brake and is it just a gimmick or is it actually a benefit added to the gun, I absolutely think it's a benefit added to the gun, especially when you use it on these shorter offerings from dead air. I'm Eric Cowboy Stage Dynamics. Train accordingly.